Today, we're going to talk about everything you need to know on the basics of aquarium fertilizer, no matter what type of fertilizer it is. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button, maybe even ring that little notification bell so that you don't miss other informative videos just like this one. Hello everyone, this is Bentley and today we're going to go over the basics of aquarium fertilizer in a small series where I'm going to cover everything you need to know about aquarium fertilizer and why you would pick a certain method over a different one. So let's start with the simple stuff. There's kind of three styles of fertilizer and that depends on the delivery method. The first and most common that most of us use nowadays is something like this. This is Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green. This is an all-in-one liquid fertilizer. Now there's a ton of these out there, whether it's the Seachem Flourish line, uh, Thrive from Nylock G, Brightwell has a wonderful line of fertilizers, uh, Dustin's Fish Tanks has Grow Juice, Tropica has stuff, Dennerlay has stuff, ADA has stuff. Everybody, it seems, has a liquid fertilizer and most of them are all in ones but some of them are are split up in little individual most of the ones that you're going to find are going to be an all-in-one like easy green and then an iron supplement why would we pick this over something else they're simple it's usually something you dose once a week if you're in a low-tech tank or twice a week for a medium to high-tech tank it kind of has a good mixture of everything and each one has a small difference uh, an example would be like in Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green, there's slightly more nitrogens than there is in Nylock G Thrive. But Nylock G Thrive has just a little bit more magnesium. Does this really matter? Not until we get into some super detailed stuff in a later video all about liquid fertilizers. But in the end, each one is basically similar. So it's just a matter of picking the one that you like the most. The second type of fertilizer is a root tab. These happen to be made by Aqua Verde. These are their grow soil tabs. Um, I have some of these in when I did some testing, but there's also stuff like Seachem Flourish, Aquarium Co-op, Nylock G. Everybody has some form of root tab and they're all a little different in how they're delivered. Some are a very like solid, like the Seachem Flourish root tabs. This very solid little brick that you just plug into your substrate and they're great for delivering all sorts of nutrients to your root feeders. Much like a all-in-one liquid fertilizer, this is an all-in-one fertilizer too. Some people will do uh, their own DIY versions of this. I personally never suggest doing those. We'll talk about that more in depth when we cover root tabs in the next video that's in this line. Why do we want root tabs over liquid? If we're just setting up a tank at first, that's a good opportunity for using root tabs because they go a little slower. You kind of just have to plug them in every six inches, five inches or so in your tank and let them sit there for a month, two months, sometimes even three, depending on the demand of your plants. If your tank is mostly root feeding plants like cryptocurrines, swords, and similar plants, this is all you need. And it's going to deliver the nutrients to the best possible place for the plant. Let's talk about the last version because it's kind of an amalgamation of the two. This is a powdered fertilizer and for those who are really familiar with what is the EI method of doing fertilizers or estimated index, you're working with this. This here is just potassium. It's a whole bag of potassium sulfate. And you'll usually, with a powdered fertilizer like this, have a big mixture of different supplements that you're adding. And you're going to mix them in certain ratios into a solution with some distilled water, and you're gonna dose them yourself. <laughs> I personally don't use the estimated index method, but I do have a ton of this stuff because I'm gonna test it side by side eventually. So why would you want to do this much more um, tedious method, let's call it tedious. If you're doing a really high tech tank, let's say you're trying to go for like that Tom Bar level, like all these rare plants that are super beautiful, require insanely high light, lots of CO2. 
that's where you want to start looking at really, really controlled fertilizer like this. You're doing some level of fertilization every single day, usually alternating between your micronutrients and your macronutrients. What are the macro and micronutrients? Let's cover those. If we're going to understand fertilizer, we need to understand the difference between macro and micronutrients. This is really key. Macronutrients are the four most necessary nutrients for plants. These are the ones that they, the plants consume in the largest quantities, and more importantly, are the biggest building blocks for keeping your plants healthy. Those macronutrients are potassium, nitrogen, magnesium, and phosphorus. Very, very common. Pretty much every all-in-one fertilizer has these in the highest amounts. And when you get to something like an EI method, this is the one that you're going to dose every other day. The other important part are your micronutrients. If macros are the ones that the plants need the most of and they consume in the highest quantity, micros are the opposite, as the name implies. These are the ones that the plants need the least of and they consume them in very small amounts. But those very small amounts can be critical to keeping your plants healthy, lush, and having beautiful color. Let's cover each of the micronutrients too. Your micronutrients include, and I, I literally, because the list is a little bit longer and I forget it all the time, I have to use my phone. Sorry about that. Iron, which we use commonly for our red plants, manganese, chlorine, copper, boron, molybdenum, that's a hard one to say, cobalt, and nickel. Now there's one nutrient that I've left out that is absolutely critical to any plant growth, and that is carbon. Carbon is technically a macronutrient. It is in fact the nutrient that plants need the most of in order to grow, but we typically do not have carbon in our fertilizers. Sometimes you will have carbon supplements like uh, Flourish Excel or Aquarium Co-op Easy Carbon. There's a ton of them, but Typically, the way that we deliver our carbon to plants is through carbon dioxide, which is in the water column. And we can either do this in a low-tech tank by having our fish breathe and they'll exhale carbon dioxide. And there's naturally, as the water churns at the top, little bits of carbon dioxide being introduced to the water. Or if we're using a pressurized CO2 or DIY CO2 system, we are injecting additional CO2 into the aquarium to help accelerate the rate at which our plants can grow and the amount of nutrients they can take in. The key about carbon is that the more carbon that is present, the more of the other nutrients your plants are going to require, and usually the more light too, because they're going to be able to consume more of the most important building block of life to grow, and thus they need more of everything the more carbon is present. Some people will use a liquid carbon I personally don't suggest this because long-term, the other chemical that is commonly found in liquid carbons, which is an algicide, can long-term be bad for your tank. In the short term, it can be really good to deal with algae or maybe get a little boost if you ran out of CO2 and you wanna get a little bit of carbon in there, but long-term, it's not the best method to help your plants grow. That being said, I've seen plenty of success stories with liquid carbon. So if you've had success with it, you don't necessarily have to follow me because I've suddenly said, never use it, right? It's all about your success. However, the best way to get carbon into your system is to inject even just a little bit of CO2. So what do each of these nutrients give you? Why are they so important? Well, as we look at plants that are not healthy, we can identify their deficiencies based on what kind of damage happens to a plant. There's a really great graphic that I'm gonna put on the screen right here that is a guide, basically a quick visual guide for most of the deficiencies in plants. But long-term what we wanna do is understand each of these components and why they're critical. And for that, we're gonna to go to the next video in the series where I'm going to go in depth on each of the individual elements that make up our aquarium fertilizer. And then we're gonna take a look at each delivery system of fertilizer and find what is the best fertilizer for you. So what I'd love to hear down in the comments, what type of fertilizer do you use currently? If you use any at all in your planted tank, 
Uh, are you using a liquid? Is it an all-in-one? Do you do the estimated index? Do you use root tabs? Uh, is there a specific type of fertilizer you've tried and don't like versus another one that you do like? Let me give you an example. I personally am not a big fan of the Seachem Flourish line because I hate pouring into caps and dosing that in. I like something easy. I like a pump trigger and nearly every other fertilizer out there nowadays has one. So when I dose liquid fertilizers, I just boom, 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 done. I'm lazy. I go for ease of use. So let me know down in the comments what type of fertilizer you use and what is your favorite. If you've enjoyed this video and you're looking forward to the next video in the series or learning everything you need to know about aquarium fertilizers, consider giving us a little like. It helps with the magic YouTube algorithms. If you don't think aquarium fertilizer is all that interesting and you only keep bare bottom tanks with no plants, you can hit that thumbs down twice. I'll understand. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.